Welcome to another lab in Network Support Services, Windows Networking. I will be hosting this lab in Hyper-V. You as the student will follow along, answering all questions, and taking the appropriate screenshots as shown in your worksheet. So let's begin. 70-740 Lab 10 Configuring Hyper-V Networking this is probably going to be one of the shortest labs in our entire course. Shouldn't take us very long at all. We're going to be looking at uh, Hyper-V networking in conjunction with creating virtual machines, creating and managing our virtual switches, adding a virtual interface card, and we'll be also looking at optimizing our network performance. So let's get into it. Uh, of course, since we're working with an Active Directory network, we've got our DC1 already running, and we're going to be working principally with our SVR1. In our first exercise, which is creating virtual machines, we're going to create a virtual machine simply called VM1. And now we did a similar exercise back in Lab 8, but in this exercise, we're going to use it to connect a virtual switch later in the exercise. We're going to use it to connect to a virtual switch in later exercises. Remember that a virtual machine is a self-contained, isolated unit that can be easily moved from one physical computer to another. It runs its own operating system, and it includes its own virtual hardware configuration. Within the Hyper-V Manager console, you can create virtual machines, import VMs, and create virtual hard disks. And these are to be used by VMs, or a virtual hard disk could be attached to the host PC. So let's get into it. We'll go ahead and we're going to get logged into our SVR1. And for some reason that wants to come up behind my hypervisor. So we'll just go ahead and we'll log in this way. Now as server manager comes up, I'm going to see if I can bring up and switch this. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go and we're going to open up our Hyper-V Manager. And in Hyper-V Manager, we're going to select New Virtual Machine. On the Begin screen, uh, we're just going to simply go ahead and click Next. And as you can see, I've already typed it in. Our name's going to be VM5. Let's answer our first question before we go any farther. This is simply reinforcing knowledge. Question one, what is the default storage location for the virtual machine? We didn't change our storage paths. You can see it's grayed out on your screen. C colon backslash program data slash Microsoft slash Windows slash hyper dash V slash. You can put the, the final slash on uh, or not, it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm not that picky. Uh, but you want to see for your answer for question one, the default location, C colon slash program data slash Microsoft slash Windows slash hyper dash V. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click next. On our generation, we're just going to allow it to stay Gen 1. We'll click next. It's already assigned 1024. We're going to select to use the dynamic memory and we'll click next and on our networking page we're going to answer our question number two and it is simply how many network connections are available well have we defined any virtual switches no we have not so there are none there are no network connections available the answer to question two is none we click next under the create a virtual hard disk page we're going to modify that size down to 60 gig and remember it's going to be dynamically expanding so it's only going to start out uh, you remember how big four megabytes now it says we're going to install an operating system from an ISO from a bootable CD DVD ROM and remember that with Gen 1 it could be a physical DVD. We're going to do image file, we're going to browse, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to 
to select that ISO that we've got linked from our Lund DC1 software folder that's been shared. We're going to click open. We're going to click next. Here's our summary screen and this will be your first screenshot. Go ahead and take a screenshot and paste it into step number 14 in your worksheet. If you've got that worksheet, we're going to click finish and our first exercise is done. That was difficult, right? Now, let's start building out our networking infrastructure. Exercise two is creating and managing virtual switches. In this exercise, we're going to create an internal switch and a private switch. We're then going to configure a VM to connect to one of those virtual switches. To set up a test network that includes multiple systems, you need to configure a virtual switch using the Virtual Switch Manager. This enables your VMs to communicate with each other and to access your physical network for internet access. On our SVR1 and on our Hyper-V Manager, we're going to select the Virtual Switch Manager from the right-hand column. We can see our options for creating a virtual switch. Step number two is, in the what type of virtual switch do you want to create box, click private. So we're going to say we want to create a private switch. We click the create switch button and we're going to rename it private switch. And we're going to click apply. We can see our new private switch right here. Let's answer question number three. Which machines can use a private switch? Do you know? Let's go back over here. Up at the top, if we select new virtual private switch, let's look at our explanation. Private creates a virtual switch that can be used only by the virtual machines that run on this physical computer. So only VMs running on this host computer can utilize a private switch. Answer to question three is it can only be used by the VMs running on the host computer. Okay, you've got your third question. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take a screenshot of this screen right here and paste that into step number four. Now that we've got that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select new virtual switch once more. And this time we're going to select internal. And while there's no question associated with this, I want you to understand what an internal switch does. It creates a virtual switch we can attach our VMs to that switch. Those VMs will be able to communicate with each other and the physical computer. It doesn't provide connectivity to a physical network connection, but it allows your VMs to communicate with each other and the physical computer. We're gonna click Create Virtual Switch and we're gonna rename that Internal Switch. and select apply. You'll notice that when you make a change in the left hand column the option is bold blue. Once I click apply it'll go into the normal text in black. Okay see that? This applies to when you're modifying settings in a VM as well. You can modify m multiple settings you'll be able to see which settings you have changed. They'll be in bold blue. Until you click apply, they're pending. Let's go ahead and get a screenshot showing our new internal switch and paste that into step number eight. If we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And our second exercise is almost done. We're part way through it. Let's go ahead and we're going to right click on our VM5 and we're going to go to settings. We're going to see that bold blue change now. We're going to go down to network adapter. 
So you, you see there's one that was created by default when we created this VM, but there's nothing connected to it. We're going to select the little down arrow and we're going to connect it to our private switch. Let's go ahead, take a screenshot just the way it is and paste that into step number 13. You'll notice that network adapter private switch is still shown in bold blue. I'm not going to click apply this time. I'm simply going to click OK. OK accepts those changes. And now we have our VM connected to a virtual switch. It now has a network connection. We're done with our second exercise. Let's add a second interface card to this VM. This is our third exercise, adding a virtual interface card. Each virtual machine can support a total of 12 virtual network adapters. And of that, you, eight of those can be your synthetic adapters or your standard adapters. And four of them can be the legacy network adapters. It states to add or remove network adapters, you must turn off the computer. Well, I've done it on the fly already. But our VM's not been started. We never configured it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to right click and we're going to go to settings. And as we enter into our settings, we can see that the add hardware at the top is already selected. What we're going to do is we're going to select network adapter and we're going to click add. And we have a second adapter that's now connected. And we're going to connect that to our private switch. So let's go ahead and take another screenshot showing two network adapters now installed, one applied, one pending, and paste that into your step number four. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click apply. Now that you've got your screenshot, what would this allow us to do? Two network adapters both connected to the same switch? Right, we could do Nick teaming. So once we create this VM and have it running in our Windows operating system within it, we could create a NIC team and double the throughput. Let's do our lab challenge. In this exercise, we're going to review and modify our virtual machine network performance options. For those machines that need additional performance, some network adapters support features that assist specifically with virtualization and iSCSI storage. And this includes our virtual machine queue, the VQM, IPsec task offloading, and single root IO virtualization, and that's abbreviated SR-IOV. Let's go ahead, we're gonna go back into our settings. And in our settings dialog box here on the left-hand column, we're going to expand the little plus beside our first network adapter and we're going to select hardware acceleration. Let's answer question number four. Which hardware acceleration options have been enabled? Well, by default, we can see we've got two right out of the box. Enable virtual machine queue and enable IPsec task offloading. So there's your, there's your answer to question number four. Enable virtual machine queue and enable IPsec task offloading. To enable single root IO virtualization, we check enable SR-IOV. Let's go ahead and take a screenshot with all three having checks and paste that into your step number four. We're going to go ahead, now that you've got your screenshot, we're going to click OK. And this lab is complete. I told you it was going to be quick. We're in and out. We're done. Our lab is over. Save your changes to your worksheet and please upload them to your Dropbox. And I will see you in the next lab or lesson. Thank you.